This is a first in a series of screencasts about mass transfer. Estimating diffusivity is the headline of this screencast. And the layout is that we start by asking ourselves why do we study mass transfer? How does it happen? We go through compulsory task two. And then we go into the main part of this screencast, estimating diffusivity, where we first derive or rather hand wave forward a simple model that we then use. And then we present and use an advanced model. Why do we study mass transfer? Well, there is a whole lot of reasons why mass transfer is needed. For example, if you want to study how pollutants spread in air, soil and water, if you want to understand how transdermal therapeutic plasters work, if you're building a tunnel and want to know if the injected sealant will polymerize, if you want to know how a poison spread in the body, if you want to know how long the milk will keep fresh, depending on what temperature and so on. All those problems have to do with mass transfer. So how does it happen? Well, we all know that if you have uh, some sugar cubes and put that into some tea, the sugar cubes will dissolve faster if you stir. And this is simultaneous transport of heat, mass and momentum. So why does it dissolve faster if we stir? Well, to simplify, we divide the mo movements into convection and diffusion. And convection is when an entire package of liquid moves from one place to another, while diffusion is due to the random movement, the Brownian motion of the molecules. So the molecules move and they collide and they change direction and therefore they mix as they move randomly about. So convective transport. How can we calculate that? Well, if we have a simple pipe and we have a flux velocity, meter per second, try to figure out what the heat energy transport is along this pipe and the mass transport. Pause here and try to do it yourself. Okay, I hope you have figured out that the mass transport, we can express that as m dot, so kilogram per second divided by the area to get kilogram per square meter a second. That simply equals the velocity times the density. So we have meter per second there and kilogram per cubic meter there. So therefore we get kilogram per square meter a second. If you instead want to have the molar transport of, for example, substance A, you take the velocity again times the concentration of A. And for the heat transport, well, then we have to have some temperature that we relate to that we say that at that temperature we have no heat no energy stored. It's a bit strange way to put it, but that's a simplistic way to view at it. So Q dot equals M dot divided by the area and then times the so-called heat content. That's not entirely correct to call it that. But anyway, CP times delta T tells you how much energy is needed to rise it to that temperature. The diffusive transport, according to Fick's law, is a constant times the surface times the driving force. So if we express it per square meter, taking away the surface there, we get the diffusivity times the concentration gradient here, how fast the concentration changes in a certain direction. And if we look at the units, we have the distance in meters, the concentration in mole per cubic meter, and we want to have the transport in mole per square meter in a second, so we can ask ourselves, what is the unit of diffusivity? Well, it's square meter per second. Okay, what about estimating diffusivity? Well, you can either estimate it based on different physical properties. And we will do that in this lecture and the transport process exercises are all about that. Or you can measure it through an experiment and that is what you're going to do in the compulsory task two. And we will just introduce compulsory task two here by saying that you have two burettes, one with acetone and one with water. And you should study how fast the acetone and water evaporates. So you go to these two burettes, note down at what time you did the measurements and note down carefully exactly how many milliliters there are in the two burettes at that time. And be as accurate as you can. So take a minute and think about what is 
the volume in this one here. Note here that if you have a transparent liquid surface, you get this menisc, and that's working as a lens. So the blue line here at the back of the burette turns into an arrow, and you should read it there. So how many milliliters? Well, this is 0 0.25, so this must be 0 0.3. But I wouldn't be pleased if you said 0 0.25 or 0 0.3 here. I want you to be more exact. So I would say 0 0.27 here would be a rather good measurement. Okay. More theory will follow in the following screencasts. Okay, so we've done compulsory task 2. And time to estimate diffusivity. And we will now hand wave forward a simple model and use that. So what determines the diffusivity of a substance in another substance? Well, the diffusivity is determined by the velocity and the distance between collisions. So let's imagine a very simplified world where all the molecules are spread out exactly evenly. So we have a molecule here which we study and it has six different surrounding molecules, six neighbors, all at a distance L from this studied molecule. And we want to study how fast this molecule spreads into the others. So if we decrease the velocity of this molecule, well, then it spreads more slowly, right? So a decrease in velocity must mean a decrease in diffusivity. And what about the distance? If we decrease the distance, well, if we go in this direction here with the molecule, if we travel all this direction, it may collide here and change direction. So clearly, the smaller the distance, the smaller the diffusivity, because it changes direction more often. And this molecule can move in six different directions. And altogether we get that the diffusivity seems to be proportional to the velocity times the distance between molecules divided by six. Okay, time for some hand waving. Let's just take a book of kinetic gas theory and see what that says. Well, in a book about kinetic gas theory, you can look up what the average molecule speed is and what the mean free path is. The average molecule speed is simply the average speed of the molecules, given by this. And the mean th free path is the distance each molecule travels before it collides on average. And let's just simply say that we take these two and multiply and divide by 6. So we get this simple model. And I should warn you that this, this is a terribly inaccurate equation. And you need a molar mass here, and you need to take an average, and you do that this way. And you need a diameter here, and you do it this way here. And we won't go into the mathematics why you do it exactly that way. That's terribly complicated. What we will talk about, however, is the diffusivity of A in B versus diffusivity of B in A. Does DAB tell us anything about DBA? Well, in this course, we will only deal with binary systems. And while you try to figure out the answer to this question, look at this illustration once again. You see the blue molecules. You see the red molecules. The blue molecules spread into the red area and the red one spread into the blue area. Does the diffusivity of the blue molecules into the red molecules tell us anything about the red molecules into the blue molecules? Yes, it does. Simply that they must be exactly the same. The blue atoms can't be mixed if the red atoms are not mixed. Okay, let's do a calculation. Uh, this is the simplified inaccurate equation that we're going to use. And let's calculate the diffusivity for benzene in air at 1 atmosphere and 38.1 degrees Celsius. We use our handbook and look up the molar mass of air, which is 28.97 grams per mole. And we will treat air as one component, although it actually contains nitrogen, oxygen and so on. As for molar mass of benzene, we have six carbon atoms and six hydrogens, so we have 78 grams per mole. 
the size of the molecules. Well, we actually have a table with characteristic collision diameters, and that's what we want. So we look it up as 3.6 angstrom for air and 5.27 angstrom for benzene. And we put that all into this equation down here, where we have the gas constant, the temperature in Kelvin, Avogadro's constant, the diameter in SI units, the molar mass in SI units, so kilogram per mole, and then the pressure, Pascal. And we get 3.18 10 to the power minus 6 square meter per second. And we can compare that with the literature value of 9.62. So this is clearly not good enough. It's the right order of magnitude, but not good enough to use. So we need an advanced model instead, where we take into account interactions between molecules. So not only when they collide, but we, when they're close to each other and the size of the molecules. And actually, we de will define the size of the molecules by the force between the molecules. And how this is done to go all the way to the advanced model, that's far from trivial. And that's on the level of uh, dissertation in mathematics. So we can't go through that here. What we will instead do is to look at diffusive transport of different things, like mass, heat, and momentum. And the diffusive transport is a constant times the driving force, and for mass, the driving force is the derivative of concentration within space. And this is the energy content, so to say. And this is the momentum content. So you get this diffusivity and this and this one here. And we will introduce three-dimensional less groups, Prandtl, Schmidt, and Lewis number that tells you the relation between these three diffusivities. Let's look at those in a bit more detail. We have three lines here, and that's because this is a definition. This one up here, nu, is the kinematic viscosity. Mu is the dynamic viscosity, so viscosity but in a different unit. Cp is the heat capacity. Lambda is the thermal conductivity, and alpha we use for thermal diffusivity. And then we have the mass diffusivity for A and B, and the density, rho. So, what is the mechanism behind diffusion? Well, it's Brown in motion. But it works a bit differently for the three different entities. So for mass, it's simply the mixing of molecules. For heat, it's the mixing of molecules and the possible transfer of molecule velocity from one molecule to another. For momentum, it's the mixing of molecules and the transfer of linear momentum from molecule to molecule. So the direction matters in momentum transport, while it doesn't matter in heat transport. For an ideal gas, Prandtl equals Schmidt equals 1, which means that the numerical values of the Kinematic viscosity, the thermal diffusivity, and the mass diffusivity are the same. One last comment about the simple model is that if we have Prandtl equals Schmidt equals 1, then we can use the definition of Prandtl and Schmidt and calculate the thermal conductivity and the dynamic viscosity. But these equations are not good enough, so instead of the equation for the thermal conductivity to the left here, we should use something like this instead of the dynamic viscosity here we should use this equation here and instead of this one for mass diffusivity we should use this one here where we have introduced another constant here 0 0.2088 we still have the molar mass an average molar mass we have the characteristic collision diameter we have a correction factor it has to do with the forces between the molecules, the, the temperature in Kelvin still, and the gas constant, Avogadro's number, and the total pressure. And this correction number here, well, that's given by this kind of function here. So on the x-axis we have kappa times the temperature divided by epsilon, and epsilon is the characteristic energy, which you can look up in the compendium. It also is related to the size of the molecule or rather the size of the molecule is dependent on the forces between the molecules as is the characteristic energy. 
So T star here is a unitless temperature. And we need to calculate average values. So for the collision diameter, we take a simple average. For characteristic energy, we take the average in another way. If we don't know the collision diameter, we can estimate that from this equation here, the molar volume at the boiling point. If we don't know that, but know the density at the boiling point, we can use this equation. And if we don't even know that, we can use the contribution method, which we'll come back to soon. And if we don't know the characteristic energy, but know the boiling point, we can use this equation to estimate the characteristic energy. And this kappa here is Boltzmann's constant. Okay, time to do our example again. Benzene in air, 38.1 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. We have the characteristic energy given in the handbook as 97 Kelvin for air and benzene 440 Kelvin. And we get an average epsilon divided by kappa as 206 Kelvin. And we can calculate the dimensionless temperature as 1.51 and read the correction factor from the, the diagram as 1.2. The collision diameter as before, 4.44 angstrom. The molar mass as before, 42.26, 10 to the power minus 3 kilogram per mole, remember SI units. And we stuff that into the equation and get 9.28, 10 to the power minus 6 square meter per second. And the literature says 9.62, so that's fairly good. If you don't know the size of the molecule, you can estimate the size of the molecule using the contribution model. Then you take the volume of benzene, for example, uh, six times the volume for a carbon atom, six times the volume for a hydrogen atom, and then minus the ring. And benzene is a ring of six. So we get six times 14.8 for carbon, six times 3.7 for hydrogen, and then minus 15 for the ring. These numbers you have to have some kind of table to look up. And we get 96 times 10 to the power minus 6 cubic meter per mole and we get a size of the molecule and we can calculate the size of the molecule as 5.34 times 10 to the power minus 10 meters which is similar to what we had before. Okay for diffusion in liquids you can read in the compendium there are two different models that we will use First one for macromolecules, which is called Stoke-Einstein's equation, which is based on a force balance. We have also some constant here, the temperature in Kelvin, and then we have the viscosity of the solution, which is a bit tricky because even small amounts of A and B might actually influence the viscosity, so it's a bit difficult. But in very diluted solutions, where A doesn't interfere with the viscosity, this one is nice to use. And you have also have the radius here. For smaller molecules, you can use Wilkshank's equation, where you have the molar mass here. You have an association parameter here. You have temperature, viscosity of the solution, and the molar volume for the solute, so the dissolved substance. So, to summarize, the diffusive mass transport is proportional to diffusivity, to the concentration gradient, and thus to the inverse of the distance. And we have similar transport of heat, mass, and momentum. 